Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink using another lovely layers wafer die set from Honeybee. I, I love them. <laughs> this is the lovely layers peony wafer die set. This is the latest one and it's fabulous, just like all of them. I do, someone made a comment recently and they're like, you know, looking at all the wafer dies, it's overwhelming. Yes. When you look at sets like this, in fact, pretty much every Lovely Layers set, or most of them, when you just look at the wafer dies, like just as it is, you know, on the packaging, it's like, this is confusing. Trust me, super simple to put together. Basically, almost all of them, you basically just go largest to smallest. <laughs> it's once you do one, once you do one, trust me, it's great. Honeybee does have a download that you, and I'll try to remember to link to it, you can download a little PDF that has their, you know, layering guide to show you visually, you know, how to do it. And same thing, once you see it, it all comes together. So I am using these um, memory box six by six cardstock collections. I bought these like a year ago. I don't even know. I've been hoarding them for no good reason. And I was like, these are perfect for the lovely layers sets because you get a ton of colors in a pack, you know, in different shades. Perfect, perfect. I will note these cardstock packs, they are not solid color cardstocks. They're white core with the color, I think it's just printed on them, which for the most part doesn't matter. But I wanted to mention that just because cardstock that has been printed on versus like solid color cardstock, they act differently if you're wanting to do like inking and different techniques, things like that. But for your basic die cutting, they're great. It's totally great. So I used um, the Vibrant Violet collection for all the peony layers. And I did all this first. Like I sat down and I cut out my pieces because I didn't want to pull out all the pieces of cardstock out of here because it's just easier to keep them in the pack. And then um, did all my die cutting super, super simple. The only thing with this set that you need to die cut multiples of is the leaves. That's it. Everything else is already thought out. You just do one die cut and then you layer them together. And layering them together, like I said, you basically go largest to smallest. And on top of that, all of these lovely layers wafer die sets, they fit together. I don't want to say like a puzzle because you're not putting things side to side, but everything just fits. You'll, you'll notice like the way certain little edges are shaped and then you just line up the next layer fits that little edge. And trust me, if I can do it, anybody can do it because <laughs> I avoid anything really finicky or that you have to put a ton of thought into. <laughs> and this just came together. It was so simple. If you really want to zhuzh it up, you could pop up the layers with some foam, like create incredible dimension. I find that just adhering the layers especially something like like this is heavyweight cardstock it's like 110 pound um, I find that just by the time you've layered all of these pieces together there's enough dimension and it's nice and thick and everything's going on but if you really want to zhuzh it up you could pop it up with foam tape or do multiple layers things like that so I did the large peony um, the bud same thing you go kind of largest to smallest there is in the actual die set that a customer would purchase. There's a piece that has the bud and the stem together that is supposed to be your base. I don't have that yet. It's getting shipped out separately. It was just a mist in the pre-production, but I would have done that first. And then you just adhere the little pieces of the bud on top of it comes together. No problem. Since I didn't have that though, I just took that little leaf piece there that's kind of on the left and I'm just going to trim off the actual leaf and just keep the little stem and I'm going to use that as a stem for my bud. Simple. And then off camera, I actually did a second large peony because it came together so easily. And I was like, oh, this is really pretty. And there just, there just needs to be more. <laughs> I love peonies, but I say that with every lover that I said, I'm like, I love hydrangeas. I love tulips. I love all flowers. They're beautiful. So I did all my die cutting and then I grabbed a piece of white cardstock and I cut it down smaller than an A2 card using Honeybee's Sweet Stacks Rectangles Wafer Die Set. And then I grabbed this fabulous um, Swirling Leaves Pierced A2 cover plate. I love Honeybee's piercing cover plates. They don't die cut. They just pierce the pattern into your cardstock. And it's 
lovely. Like, seriously. So, after I had that piece and added the piercing, I flipped it over and I covered the back with uh, Simon's and Stamps Big Mama foam tape, just so I'm going to get a little bit of dimension. I'm not going to go too overboard because, like I said, the peonies themselves with all the layers of cardstock, they got dimension. So, I'm going to pop this onto my top folding A2 card base, and then I'm going to go to town and start adhering. I die cut tons of leaves because, you know, peonies have lots of them. And I die cut them from multiple shades of that green pack. That was the lush green collection from Memory Rocks. Any color cardstock would work. Or you could do like white cardstock or watercolor paper and do sprays. I've, I've done so many different things with these. Or you could use blending brushes and inks. So many things. So many ways to just mix and match and create, you know, color and texture. And I just, I love it. I had so much fun making this card. So... I got everything adhered and of course I'm going to add splatter. I'm going to mention this Zig Brilliant Gold Mica Liquid that I use practically all the time is extremely difficult to get now. I just protest on Zig, like Cure Talky Zig, why they're making this difficult to get, I don't know. So I will link to the Starry Colors little watercolor palette. That is fabulous. I've used that one for years. I'm going to have to go back to it because I'm not going to be able to get any more of this gold liquid, which just makes me sad. But the Starry Colors palette, you do have more options with that one because you have more shades of gold, which is fabulous. So I added, anyway, anyway, <laughs> I added splatter to that card and I set it aside to dry. And then I did grab another piece of that uh, vibrant violet cardstock that matched the peonies and I put it in my Misty. And I'm using sentiments from two different sets. I'm using the great big thinking of you from the thinking of you big time stamp set. And then I'm using a couple sentiments from the inside kindness sentiments set. And I've got them lined up here and I used my anti-static powder tool on the paper so that the embossing powder doesn't cling to anything other than the stamped images. And then I'm inking up the sentiments with Honeybee's clear embossing ink stamp that onto the paper and then I'm going to coat this with detail gold embossing powder and again th this is something most people probably wouldn't notice I notice it because again I'm I've been making cards for like two decades and playing with all the things even like printed card stocks like this that aren't solid solid core I notice embossing powder acts differently on it it's subtle it's it's the weirdest little thing like it's still beautiful it's great I just, it's slightly different and I can't fully explain it, but it's still beautiful. Like, you know, when it melts with the heat tool, like, so there's something so satisfying and I've sound like a broken record because I say this pretty much every time, but I don't think this will ever get old for me. <laughs> you know, again, two decades in and I'm still like, yas, <laughs> look at the shiny metallic as it melts. So I melted that with my heat tool and then all of this has, of course, coordinating dyes honeybees sentiment sets with all of their wafer dyes so this inside kindness like tons of wafer dyes tons one for every single sentiment so the inside kindness is an older set and what I did was I like I keep all my my stamps my dyes like with the original packaging I see no sense in discarding that um but with these older ones with the wafer dyes I tr I traced around the wafer dyes with a fine tip sharpie you don't have to do that anymore with all the newer die sets that honeybee's been releasing the outlines are on the packaging which i love so i wanted to point that out because i just i think it's fabulous it saves me so much time i don't have to sit and fiddle and like figure out how to put all the die pieces you know back on the packaging and I'm also always immediately aware. It's like, okay, where's this wafer die? Because <laughs> if the outline is there and I don't have the wafer die, I know to put it back on the packaging. So thumbs up to Honeybee for doing that because it just, again, it saves me just a ton, a ton of heartache. So I'm not like losing wafer dies because everything else grows legs and walks away. But at least I haven't lost any of my wafer dies yet. <laughs> Anywho, I taped all the coordinating wafer dies in place die cut them and then on the inside of the card I adhered those inside kindness sentiments I used my little t-square ruler to make sure they're straight 
And so the inside of the card, um, it says sending paper hugs since I'm not there for the real thing. Again, I love honeybee sentiments because there's so many like mixing and matching and buildable phrases and all that fun stuff. And then for this great big thinking of you, I love one, I love these sentiments, but I love that the wafer dies. Um, trim them out so nicely around the words so you're not obscuring the whole, you know, area, if you know what I mean. Like it's not just like a big bubble. So I used a combination of thin foam strips as well as a bit of glue to adhere this on top of all this dimension with the peonies and leaves and everything. So I got those popped into place. And then of course I'm going to add some more bling. So this is another thing I hoard, even though I'm on the honeybee design team, you know, there's no reason for me to be hoarding this stuff because they do send it to me, but I still hoard it because it's beautiful and I love it. <laughs> Anyway, these are the Hugs and Kisses gem stickers and the Back to Basics gem stickers. They're self-adhesive, so you just peel them off and pop them into place. Fabulous. And again, Melissa listened to me and all of my ranting when I was going on, but I was like, we need multiple sizes of the gems. <laughs> and she delivered. So I am just a very happy camper with very many things now. You know, I got my multiple sizes of gems to hoard that I occasionally use on cards like this and outlines for my wafer dies you know life is great so i adhered random like some pinks and some greens and some gold gems just to zhuzh it up a bit and um, i'm going to pair this card with a metallic green envelope from mustache and then in the photos i think you'll be able to see it a little better the peony wafer dies and the leaves have like um embossing lines and that that are just naturally done through die cutting and I love it like there's so much texture and detail and this card came together so nicely and these peonies are beautiful so as always I will have links below the video to the blog post links to all the supplies I used you can check that out below if you're interested thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting and I'll see you all very soon in the next video bye